Greetings to all who joined us today for a little taste of what the World Vegetable Center's International Vegetable Training Course can offer. I'm Maureen Mikosi, Director of Communications for World Veg, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Derek Barchender, a vegetable breeder with a passion for peppers. Derek joined World Veg in 2017 after receiving his PhD in plant and environmental sciences from New Mexico State University, Las Cruces, New Mexico, USA. Among other topics, he has conducted research on heat tolerance and disease resistance in pepper, and also investigated the conservation of wild relatives of chili peppers. He is the author of 21 scientific papers and two book chapters. A past recipient of the Borlaug Fellowship in Global Food Security, Derek also has a passion for training. His outreach includes courses on next generation phenotyping, breeding for disease resistance, plant pathogen identification, and the topic that brought you here today, hybrid cultivar development. This 15 minute session is the first of three he'll be presenting this week. Please ask your questions in the chat box. The floor is yours, Derek. My name is Derek Barshenger. I am the pepper breeder at the World Vegetable Center, and I have prepared a three-part lecture series on uh, the development of hybrid cultivars and using male sterility systems in pepper. And this is part one, hybrid cultivar development in heterosis. So heterosis is also called hybrid vigor, and it refers to the phenomenon in which hybrid offspring Exhibit, character, exhibit characteristics that lie outside the range of the parents. So this is where the progeny performs better than either parent. This hybrid vigor can result in increases of vigor and plant growth, as well as disease resistance or stress tolerance to abiotic stresses, but most importantly, it increases yield. So various models have been pr proposed to explain heterosis, uh, the two major or primary models are the dominance and overdominance gene action. So in this lecture, I won't get into the details of what are dominance and overdominance gene action. If you need uh, more information on this, you can search online or look into a uh, genetics textbook. There should be a clear description of what is dominance and overdominance. Now, of course, there is the, the disadvantage of hybrid vigor and that it's maintained only for a single generation. So every time you want to produce hybrid seed, you need to go back to your parents and make a cross. You cannot self-pollinate an F1 hybrid seed uh, to, get F, to get more of that. You would get F2, which is a segregating population. So in this figure, um, we show an example of maize yields over time in the United States. So you can see from 1865 to around 1930, open pollinated cultivars were what was primarily grown. And you can see yield during this 70 year period was relatively stable. In the early 1930s, they went to a system of double cross and double cross is a four line system where you take four individual parents, you make hybrids between two of them, so you have two F1 hybrids, and then you cross those F1 hybrids to get a double cross. In the 19, early 1960s or late 1950s, researchers started to develop what is called the single cross. And the single cross involves only two highly inbred parental lines, um, and you can see a significant increase in yield resulting uh, in the single cross as compared to the double cross as well as the open pollinated cultivars. And you can see that increase was maintained over time until present day. So how to make a hybrid? The first step is to uh, identify parents, select your parents, which are used, which you would use the system of heterotic groups to do so. And then how to make a hybrid, how to make a cross pollination. And I have a special video on cross-pollination of pepper, and you can look for that also. 
and then the use of sterility systems to support or to facilitate the development of hybrid cultivars. So for parents, um, you need two highly homozygous or highly inbred, but genetically dissimilar as possible parental lines. So in this example I show here, we have two parents, uh, A, B, C, D, and E are their genotypes. Parent one is homozygous dominant for the A, C, and E allele. And parent two is the opposite and is homozygous dominant for the B and D allele. So you can imagine that each one of these alleles constitute a trait or contribute to a trait of a yield component. So these could be fruit length, uh, flower number per node, um, fruit weight, something like that. And if we imagine that all of those traits are dominant uh, or in the, where the trait is positive if it is in the dominant form, you can see that the resulting F1 progeny is heterozygote at every one of those alleles, resulting in higher yield compared to either of the parents. So here's an, a really good example of the development and use of heterotic groups. This is not in pepper, this is in bitter gourd, but pepper could be treated the same way. So in this study, they used uh, SSRs or simple sequence repeat markers and a large panel of bitter gourd lines that originated from across Asia. And what they found is that genetically, those that originated in Southeast Asia all grouped together, those that originated in South Asia or, uh, grouped together, and then there was this other group that consisted of East and Southeast Asia lines. And what they found was that when you cross a, a, a line in group A, for example, with a line in group B or C or D or E, a high level of heterosis existed. So the, these lines are genetically dissim dissimilar, originated from different parts of the world, and the progeny have high levels of heterosis. So now that we've selected our parents, we need to know how to make a hybrid. So producing F1 hybrid seed of a self-pollinating crop can be time-consuming, highly laborious, and quite costly. So in order to produce hybrid seed, you need to grow your plants in isolation, which can be done in a plastic house, a poly house, a screen house, or a greenhouse. Um, you can see here in this first picture, we have a fully mature pepper flower prior to anthesis. So the petals have turned white, indicating that the plant or the flower is mature, but the petals have not opened yet. In pepper, if the petals open, there's a chance that it is already self-pollinated. So the first step then, or the next step, is to remove the anthers and the petals of the female flower in a process called emasculation. This can be done with forceps or tweezers or with your fingers. And then it, I don't show a picture here, but you can collect the pollen from the male parent and you can bulk it or you can just keep it separate or just use an anther, which is shown here. So here what you can see is that they are taking an anther inside the forceps and they're touching the stigma, the receptive stigma of the female parent making a hybrid. Now I have a separate video on how to cross pollinate pepper. You can look for that uh, also in, and to get more details. So in order to make the process of cross pollination easier, less time consuming and cheaper, a lot, of, uh, a lot of breeders are using male sterility. And male sterility is the process by which a normally uh, hermaphroditic species uh, produces only female gametes. So a hermaphroditic species can be like a, a cucurbit, for example, and produce male flowers and female flowers on the same plant. Or a hermaphroditic species can also be like pepper or tomato, for example, and produce both male and female flower parts in the same flower. But uh, sterility results in plants that fail to produce functional anthers or pollen 
or male gametes. So in pepper, a sterile plant produces anthers but does not produce pollen. So male sterility can arise spontaneously via mutations in nuclear genes or cytoplasmic genes. Male sterility is easy to detect because normally plants produce large numbers of pollen grains. So you can easily see a plant that doesn't produce pollen grains because there are no fruit setting, their flowers usually uh, drop before any fruit is sent. And if there's any question, you can also assay your pollens using uh, some staining technique to, dis to determine if they are alive or dead. So hybrid seed production using male sterility. So instead of emasculation, uh, a cheaper and faster way to establish a female line or hybrid seed is to identify or create a line that is unable to produce pollen. Since male flowers, male sterile lines cannot self-pollinate, Seed formation is dependent upon pollen from another donor flower. So as I mentioned, there are two general categories of sterility in plants. The cytoplasmic male sterility system, or CMS, which is controlled by mitochondrial genes, or the genic male sterility system, also known as GMS, where the phenotype is controlled by nuclear genes. So as I mentioned, CMS is controlled by mitochondrial genes, and you might remember from your genetics course that mitochondrial genes are inherited from the mother. So they do not follow normal and Mendelian inheritance models. So in a, in a progeny population, their mitochondrial genome is coming exclusively from the mother. CMS is maintained in a two-line system. You have your male sterile or A line, which has the genotype S meaning sterile cytoplasm and then homozygous recessive at the RF or restority restore a fertility gene um, and then in, you also have a maintainer line or a B line which is a near isogenic line meaning genetically identical to the A line with the exception of the mitochondrial gene for sterility so the B line is has the genotype of N little RF little RF and then to make a hybrid, you, it requires these, what are called RF genes or restore of fertility genes. And so your restore or your C line has the genotype N, meaning normal cytoplasm, and then is homozygous dominant for the RF gene. So here is a pictograph to more easily explain uh, what I was talking about in the previous slide. <clears throat> so you have here your A line, or your male, male sterile line, which has S cytoplasm and homozygous recessive at the RF gene. In order to get more seed of your A line, you simply need to cross it to your B line or your maintainer line. And then the progeny have the exact same genotype as your A parent. In order to increase seed of your B line, you simply need to self-pollinate because it produces functional pollen. Now that you have a stable male sterile line, you can make a hybrid. And to make a hybrid, you need to cross your A line to a C line or a restore line. So here you can see your restore line has normal cytoplasm and is homozygous dominant at the RF gene. So when you cross these two, the resulting progeny has sterile cytoplasm and is, homo and is recess uh, sorry, heterozygote at the RF gene. And this is the genotype of your commercial hybrid. So the GMS system is controlled by nuclear genes. So there are more than 20 known GMS genes in pepper. And these follow Mendelian inheritance models where fertility is dominant and sterility is recessive. And you maintain the GMS system in the heterozygous state. So your segregating population will be homozygous recessive MS, MS is male sterile, heterozygote is male fertile. So every generation of self-pollination in order to maintain the seed, 50% of your progeny will be fertile and need to be discarded. Thus, molecular markers are very useful in the GMS system. 
So here is a very short, small Punnett square to highlight what I was just talking about. So in the GMS system, you will have your sterile line and then the same line that is uh, heterozygote for the MS gene. When you cross these, you see that the progeny are segregating 50% heterozygote, 50% little uh, homozygous recessive, and these are your male sterile lines to be used in your hybrid. So there are advantages and disadvantages of both the GMS and the CMS system. The advantages of CMS is that it's more cost effective to maintain because you don't need to eliminate 50% of your progeny. It's highly effective. A and B, uh, sorry, we have highly effective A and B line molecular markers in pepper as well as for other crops. However, it's very difficult to breed for CMS because you need to identify diverse B lines, which is quite difficult. Um, it's heavily influenced by temperature, so not often stable, with RF genes breaking down under high temperature and CMS genes breaking down under low temperature. We don't really have a lot of effective RF markers in Pepper, and the RF gene system in Pepper is also quite complex. So for GMS, it's more environmentally stable, less influenced by temperature, it follows normal and Mendelian inheritance models, so it's easy to, more easy to breed for. We use a two-line model where sterile and fertile populations in a one-to-one -one ratio of fertile and sterile. It's less cost-effective because you need to eliminate 50% of the progeny each time you multiply seed. And we have more than 20 different GMS genes, and so molecular market development is quite complex. So in summary, the future of vegetable breeding will focus more on hybrid cultivar development. Hybrid vigor can increase yield, quality, and resistance. Parental selection is key to the development of high-performing hybrids. However, hybrid seed production via hand emasculation and pollination is costly, labor-intensive, and time-consuming. And sterility systems can make seed production cheaper, uh, easier, uh, and increase quality. CMS and GMS are both useful and have advantages and disadvantages. So if you need more information or have questions, please feel free to email me. You can see my email there on the screen. This has concluded section one, and in the next section we will talk about the molecular basis for CMS in, and RF in PEPPER.